Well, hey everybody, uh, welcome to 360 History. My name is Kyle Hand. Um, so we're standing here on the highest point of Owl's Head Park. It's a quaint park on the southern tip of Brooklyn. It was actually formed 10,000 years ago when a glacier drifting um, left um, a pile of soil and sediment and boulder in its wake. It was also used by the Nyack people as a, a religious burial ground and belonged to the land of the Dutch settlers of New Utrecht. Now, uh, if you face forward here, you'll see the park's atrium. It um, was once home to one of Brooklyn's most beloved senators, Henry C. Murphy. He built the mansion here in 1856. Um, here, he actually translated a lot of Dutch literature to English, and he had a spectacular library to do it in. He also founded the Brooklyn Daily Eagle, which still lives on today. And in 1866, he drafted the Brooklyn Bridge Legislation Bill in, in this very spot. I just wondered if he looked out his window, saw this southern Manhattan slowly sprouting, and thought, these cities need to be married with a bridge. And uh, even though Henry C. Murphy has uh, seen the other side by now, um, the bridge is still there and, you know, uh, as handsome as ever. So, also in 1866, a wealthy metal manufacturer bought the estate from Murphy. His name was E.W. Bliss, and you can see his initials there on the park, and some locals will even call the park Bliss Park. You see, it's because he really beautified the space. Um, he fixed up the mansion, he built a gigantic horse stable, and he also made an observatory tower. He also planted some exotic trees, such as these, and uh, if you look straight ahead, you'll see uh, a real pretty but pretty out of place looking tree too. Bliss really loved the space, and he wanted everyone else to enjoy it too, after he was done with it. He wanted Brooklyn to buy it after he and his wife uh, saw the other side. He was quoted in the Brooklyn Daily Eagle saying, no place in the world is better fitted for a park. The city is growing rapidly southward. It seems inevitable that if the place is not preserved, within the next 10 or 20 years, it will be cut into building lots and its beauty marred, if not wholly destroyed. Brooklyn should take it and preserve it for future generations. But it didn't quite happen the way Bliss had hoped. See, when he died in 1903, the difference between the asking price and what the city was willing to pay was one million dollars in today's currency. In 1905, the city had full reign to buy it, but they fumbled over finances for two years until the financial panic of 1907 struck, rendering the deal all but impossible. By 1908, the city owed over a million dollars of today's currency in legal fees, and the project was already deemed a disaster. Throughout the 1910s, there were many local efforts to finally build something here. Some pictured a casino, a playground, a subway linking Brooklyn to Staten Island, and even a monument for the Nyack people. It wasn't until 1924 when the city committed to buying it, and then 1928 when they actually bought it, but silly city, they didn't save enough money to renovate it. And that money would not come because the next year was the Great Depression. And it wasn't until 1932 when uh, the former governor of New York, Franklin Roosevelt, was elected president and uh, he helped turn this neglected forest into a park. In the spirit of new jobs and a new vision for the future, he portioned a large part of the New Deal funds towards the renovation of New York City's public parks. And nobody knew how to turn a junkyard into a park better than Bobby uh, Robert Moses, um, the park commissioner of both New York City and New York State. And during the two years of construction, 
The entire park was laid with tools and hunks of metal and was even less pleasant than when it wasn't a, a park. He finished the park in 1937, and the following year, he finished construction on the Belt Parkway, one segment of his lifelong dream to connect the New York metro area by automobile. And, well, if this isn't a joy to look at, it's almost as fun as smelling the wastewater treatment plant right behind it, which is fairly easy to do. But thankfully, we still have this hill, this really, really old hill that absolutely anyone can stand on. No, seriously, try it. Come here and you can stand on it too. It's, it's great. It's no casino, it's, it's no observatory tower, um, but it sure is great. Really, really, really great. Thanks for watching. 360 History.